Hey, welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. And of course, here now I'm sitting at the bonfire I said didn't exist. That's because I didn't light it. Anyway, so we are now going to carry on and we're going to go into what is Irithyll actually here. So yeah, this is a uh, well, this is an awesome reveal. Um, I just wanted to point out uh, this is something I just kind of thought of at this point. I, I I I'm sure this is how like they're saying the worlds are converging, and we can just see here like just a straight cut from like this world into like boom now like it just smashed together like these aren't necessarily connecting in any way they're just the worlds are converging in like weird ways like they just start and stop that's where we fought the curse rot in great wood which means that the undead settlement is up there which means that if we were up there at a certain angle we could probably look down and see this although i don't know if there is such an angle So yeah, um, what is this called? Urethil of the Boreal Valley. Um, so yeah, I mean right away it obviously like uh, that church area uh, evokes Anne Orlando. Uh, the snowiness and the bridge and stuff also kind of evokes um, Elia Lois like the architecture of all of that. Yeah, look, I mean, stuff is just like smashed together and this fell over. The trees fallen over. I mean, this is just like the two lands are like being smashed together. Yeah, I mean, so there's all these key places I can see. I'm not... I like how detailed some of these places are that you don't go to, like this building right in front of me. I don't believe you go there. Um, but you go close enough to it. This guy's hard for me. Oh, I remember him doing a lot more damage than that. I was playing that slightly dispassionately because I got invaded. Would have been nice to defeat him, though. But yeah, you can see that Ponov's beast. materializes um, 
So there's a way to stagger him. I think it's uh, just hitting the cage, his rib cage underneath his body, and then he'll you can repost him. He he reposts really weird. Definitely dodge that. Oh. Nice. Sorry, I'm being sarcastic. And he gives you the Pontiff's right eye. Oops. So, we saw the left eye from Vort's body. Like Lord Soul, we could transpose it to the left eye, and now we have the right eye. Boost attack as long as attacking persists. Bewitched ring that Pawn of Sullivan bestowed upon his knights. Knights who peer into the black orb are lured into battles of death, transformed into frenzied beasts. No wonder the Pawn only provides these rings to those dispatched to foreign lands. It's interesting, because that beast is seemingly where... Um, where his home is, not a foreign land, but maybe he's returning, or maybe he's, I don't know. So yeah, we can see here, um, I don't know if anyone's ever tried this, but like, I'm sure, but like, you actually can't cross this gap without the doll. And in fact, interestingly enough, if you were to run over here, um, the Pontus Beast can't get through that, so... I guess we can do this now. Rhyme Blue Moss Club. We've read that, I believe, because the Shrine Handmaid it and sells it. Yeah. Alright, so now... <laughs> we start doing the very uh, obscure quests in Dark Souls 3. Uh, I think we have to quit. I mean, I suppose it's obscure if you're like doing it the first time and doing it in order and all that stuff. It's kind of meant for people to just stumble upon and talk about. But Cirrus, we talked to Cirrus, and she is like a member of the Dark Moon Covenant, and invariably probably linked to um, Irithyll. And, uh, wait, did I get it wrong here? Oh, maybe I didn't, whatever. Cirrus of the Sunless Realms calls for cooperation and be and and I'll be summoned as a phantom. It's kind of a weird way to do this with a summon sign and then I get summoned. Sorry for the leaf blower out there. That's too loud. But actually what's interesting here I only get half my Estus is that we are fighting Creighton the Wanderer, the Knight from Mira. I like that attack. Uh 
that sucks. That also sucks. Sirius, what are you doing? <laughs> he's dead, he's dead. Thank you for your kind assistance. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. And now that we've done that, Creighton will invade us and we can actually get his stuff and see what what's going on with that old Mira scoundrel, the murderer. But anyway, back to Irithyll. Um... So we have seen from the uh, some of the items that Grey Rat had that. Um, oh yeah, we should probably talk about this. So we can watch these kind of ghosts walk by. Um, I think these are the Outrider Knights that we fight. They're dressed very similarly. Um, there's actually two that are of particular interest. Oh wow. Oh, I lost all my stamina, I guess. Too bad. I love to try to bury these guys, and they are definitely such that they they're hard to bury sometimes. Um, here's an interesting site. There is a evangelist on her knees. Shooting human dregs at me. Okay, yeah, so here's another Outrider Knight. I think it's a one-to-one, -one, so everyone we meet, we see. And then in particular, there's... Um, there's two that walk by that are special Outrider Knights. Budding Green Blossom. Green flower sh oh, I think we read this. Flowers of the green blossom are ethereal, blossoming only in the surface of chilled but not frozen water. 
Makes sense to be here. Now we have a fire witch over here. I forgot she can still target me behind the wall. I hope we get one of the armor sets. From the fire witches. <laughs> Just sat and watched that happen, didn't I? Looks like this guy has human, like bleed or dark. I mean, dark on his uh, human pine resin. Alright, let's get, grab this guy quick. So there's two of these guys here. Wonder if I can grab one. Doing decent damage with that actually. Okay, we're we're screwed. That's how we'll probably handle those guys. Um, oh yeah, here they are. Is these they? Yes. So the one back we haven't seen yet, but you know, we will. That has that very distinctive face. She's very skinny, and this guy is a little bit bigger, but I believe this to be Vort and the dancer that they spoke about always being close by. And they're walking together, so it makes sense. Um. Interesting statues, just of people praying on their knees. I think it's the first time they've ever done like a Like, are you joking about that? It's just... Such long combos. And they don't get knocked back at all. What is this noise? Is it the... Is it the evangelist? That's crazy. I think this evangelist has a name. Witch tree branch. Branch of a large, well-tended witch tree used as a sorcery catalyst. Witch tree staves are customary in the far north and allowing for faster casting than ordinary catalysts. Does she attack? Oh, 
Oh, so she was... She was doing, like, some sort of... So it looks like she might have been imprisoned here. And I don't know if that's her name. Door hiss is gnawing. But this is that thing that I was calling gnaw earlier, where it sends those, like, a spiral thing coming at you, like little bugs that gnaw in you. It is a miracle, meaning I'll probably use it. Miracle of door hiss. Door hiss. The deranged evangelist. So yeah, that's her name, I guess. Those who linger too long on the brink of the deep will often slip. Dorhees is sure to have wallowed in this darkness, intoxicated by its peril. And, um... Yeah, so, I mean, the evangelists are from the Cathedral of the Deep, and they are worshipping with... the Deep. So... It makes sense, and Dorhees... Must have been an important evangelist and somehow got probably kidnapped or something and imprisoned here in Irithyll for some reason. Okay, so it does not open from this side. And we're just being told that we should be... There's a big, like, tombstone or something down there. We can't see anything really down there. Um, I don't think this has any, like, there's a bunch of these side paths, but they don't have any items. We'll go down that area later, but hopefully we we'll, should be able to see Henri here. There she blows. Oh, I thought it might be you. Good to see you. I never managed to find Taurus. I did. But my duty must be done, even alone, as an unkindled Lord Seeker. For the children, I mean, uh -huh. their souls. We all have our reasons, don't we? Okay, so maybe she. Please take this recompense for my foolish request, and also a token of protection. May the flames guide your way. So maybe she just looked over children that were victims of Aldrich or whatever. Maybe she just has a personal stake in it. She does give us the Ring of the Evil Eye, which is associated with Astora, which is where she's from. I'll read that in a second. Ah, you are brave indeed to face your duty alone. We could team up. I would do well to learn from you. May the flames guide your way. Ah, I've made... Okay. This ring captured the foul spirit of an evil eye, a creature that ravaged Astora. The horrid spirit nearly destroyed Astora, but was eventually defeated by the sword of the one most noble. And that's proof of concord kept, which is similar. It's an ear. Proof of a, a dark spirit was felled by a blue sentinel. Blood drained shrunken ear, souvenir taken by subduing the guilty. The knights called the blades of the dark moon, punish the guilt-soaked defenders of the gods, and take this as proof of their conquest. The earless corpses of the guilty will be left behind as a warning to others, inspiring both fear and respect for the gods, such as the eternal mandate of the dark sun. So yeah, I mean, if we didn't need any, if we needed any other proof, um, that's the Blades of the Dark Moon are in this game, as well as the Blue Sentinels, which is interesting. Which kind of 
also backs up my theory that the Blue Sentinels are not like a, a bastardization of the Dark Moons. I mean, I guess it still could be. They could have diverged and then been whatever, but I believe that... Um, um, oh, I just realized what Yuri was talking about. My bad. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the the I feel feel like the Blue Sentinels were in Vinheim or you know Drang Lake or Ven or whatever, and then the Blue Hits of the Dark Moon are different, and now they're both in this game. Because um, that's usually people's like proof that you know. Drang Lake is Lordran because the Blue Sentinels are clearly... I mean, it, there's a lot of stuff... <laughs> I, uh, people aren't foolish for thinking that, but they are separate, I guess. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of messages here. Uh, no Pilgrim Ahead, therefore regret. Try attacking and then Porcel. So this there's, um, in these statues of, of children, there is uh, this statue right here, um, which is... A pilgrim, and I guess this is the guy that Yuria has sent, and I just completely spaced on this. We can kill them now, but then we wouldn't get the ending that we want with uh, Henri. So we're gonna let uh, that pilgrim live, and uh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, figure out the best way to go about doing this next section. I guess we'll just go this way. Roster of Knights. A roster of the Knights of the Dark Moon who have served since the age of the old royals used to discover the names of Dark Moon Knights on order of elite knights shrouded in shadows. Let us dance, Sun Warrior. Alright. I guess maybe these were the buildings that I was saying we won't go into. So maybe we do get close to them. These kind of look like uh, Corvians, look at a different state. Like without the wings yet. And then we do see a full on Corvian here. Dragon Slayer's axe, which I don't believe he had in one. Axe favored by Creighton the Wanderer, infamous desert deserter of the Knights of Mera. Called Dragon Slayer's axe for the lightning that pulsates within the blade, but Creighton used it to slay men. Yeah, that's war cry. This is another homeward bone, and then a undead bone shard. Uh, yeah, and this Corvian was like um, praying to this tombstone. I actually don't know what this is all about. So, from what we know about the Corvians, see if we can figure this out. The Corvians were, I think, being. We found them on the road of sacrifices next to overturned carts. Either they were. 
being transported to the Cathedral of the Deep, or they were doing the transporting. Now I see a bunch of other guys in here that are not full-on Corvians, but it seems like they're the kind of hollow enemies of this area. So perhaps they were being rounded up and um, being brought to Aldrich or being brought to somewhere, something. But yeah, you can see there's the guy there. He's being shrouded. And they're like pretty Corbian-like, but they just obviously don't have the... Uh, I, they don't have the wings. Did I mention I hate dogs? These dogs I hate in particular. Rusted gold coin, we read that, right? Yeah. Alright. So I can't figure it out, I don't really know why. There's Corvians. There. At a grave. shield here I don't think. I mean when we see that it's been fixed with Scholar vs. Sin but I remember when this came out and people were definitely happy about the idea that that Torch has actually made a difference in some places. Because in the original Dark Souls 2, they had no effect. There was like no lighting engine. Blue Bug. We've read that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Frost one from here. Some of these guys have uh, miracles or something. Okay, I think that's it for this level. Okay. Driving stone. like there's like a, a middle level there's a um, treasure chest there just want to check out here first just drop down okay so it's a regular one Yorshko spear This treasure gifted to the Yorkshire, Yorshka Church, which is, by the way, where we just were, where we talked to Anani, I didn't point that out, is enchanted by a soporific spell that was surreptitiously worshipped by Irithyll slaves. Uh, as a weapon, it is part spear and part hammer, and the former allowing thrusting and the latter allowing strikes. Pacify, 
Raise the spear in prayer and temporarily wear down an enemy FP with each strike. Hmm. It's an interesting weapon. Never heard anyone talk about that. Um, so it's probably not great, but I'd be interested in checking it out. Huh. What is this? I don't know if I've ever been here. How do you get out of here? Oh, it's just this part. I gotcha. Blood gem. Do we have a blood gem yet? Slurped by Irithyll slaves. Such weapons cause lacerating damage. So obviously these uh, guys are Irithyll slaves. Which might uh, explain their presence at the road of sacrifices. Maybe they were they were the ones carting people, like because they are slaves, and then they had turned to Corvians for some reason. for not moving there. Okay. Guess we'll come up and grab these guys. Nothing there. Alright. Alright, it's it's kinda nice that there's a little shortcut there so that you can just jump down and you don't have to worry about all this stuff every time. So we can see these kind of things with long hair in the water. Um, and some of them are like alive. Like this one. Kind of looks like, uh, oh, there's a ring of sacrifice. Kind of looks like uh, Pontiff's Beast. Beasts. The Pontiff Beast that we fought with the rib cage underneath. And this is where we find a lot of green blossoms, which is, you know, appropriate because we often find them in like swampy areas like this. And I guess it's not cold enough for, uh, for the water to have frozen over here, so. Of these things. We do find them in one other place. And now here we find one of Rosaria's slugs. You can see that he's one of the casters and he has great heal, which I assume is just high ranking clerics, yeah. So, who knows why he's here, but I think he fell from the bridge up there. Um, is there something over here? No. Some more green blossoms. Let's go get them anyway. Like we don't really need them. And I'm gonna go grab a bonfire here. Just because we're gonna be coming back here and it will be nice to have Oh, okay, yeah. So I was like, what is that? When I was up there, I wasn't sure what this is, but I guess this is Aerithil Dungeon. Hmm, interesting. A 
but I'm just gonna light this up real quick. And I guess I can rest at it because we're not gonna go back on any enemies that are alive yet. Um, I'm gonna see if I can try to like basically wrap up around and open up the shortcuts and then call it an episode. We'll see. Oh, that doesn't take stamina either. Huh, interesting. Oh, great. Oh, I didn't even kill that one. Oh, my dear. Okay. What, does this do toxic as well? Nope. Um. Okay, I guess I didn't realize they gave you toxic. So that's gonna eat into my Estus flasks too much. All right, I'll be careful next time. <laughs> Weird that you don't lose stamina when running in water. I mean, I know you're running slower, but. And yeah, more feces stuff. Now, if we. Okay, we're gonna tell. Um, We're gonna tell uh, Grey Rat that he can come pillage here, and uh, yeah, if we uh, don't make sure that someone's here to help him, this is where he, we would find him dead. But we're gonna make sure someone's here so that he can survive before we tell him to come. Although I think I'm I'm already committed too deep to that. Like, in other words, if <laughs> I think Sigward's gonna be here, but if he's not, then we don't really have another option. Excrement covered ashes. That's disgusting. Unclean umbral ash coated with excrement. Perhaps it's possible the handmaid of Firelink Shrine could turn this into a few new things. Oh, to savor the sweet pungency, but once more. And Sigward is here. And I believe he is the one that's been making the soups. Because every place we find the soups, we find them close by or just... I don't know. I guess not close by, but... Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I... I must have dozed off. It's rather warm in here. Well, well, hasn't it been all too long? It's good to see you. Oh, I seem to have missed my chance, so... I, Siegfried of Katarina, offer my deepest gratitude. And a little surprise to go with it. It's all yours. I know. Won't you join me for dinner? I make a fine Esther soup. I've got some stewing right now. Even we undead deserve a little normalcy from time to time. And finally, upon this rendezvous, let us make a toast. <laughs> to your valor, my sword, and our sworn duties. Long may the sun shine. <laughs> oh, we get more of the soup just from talking to him. Have you heard? Somewhere, 
Hidden right here in Erithil is a deep dungeon. And even below that, the profaned capital, mm. home of Yorm, the reclusive giant lord. I've heard of him. That reminds me. I've a grave promise to keep. <laughs> so this is the first time we learn that Yorm and Sigurd are related. Oh. Sorry. I'm afraid I've cast a cloud over things. Well, I'm going to have myself a little nap. <laughs> the only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. <laughs> I wonder how Saber gets anything done. Ever. And how he's in some way kind of mirroring our journey if all he does is go around and uh, sleep. Um, so here we are. Here are some silver knights, some paintings we found in previous games. Be good enough. Ooh, that was not enough. Divine blessing. Uh, I think we've already read that, but this is the first one we have had in our possession. Holy water blessed by Queen Lothric. Yeah, the Queen of Lothric married the former king of Cyrus, was initially re revered as a goddy, goddess of fertility and bounty. After giving birth to Ocelot, her youngest, she quietly disappeared. We'll see a lot of parallels with the Queen of Lothric and Guinevere, and even the. Even the children of Quinn. But we'll get to that. <laughs> that didn't look like the direction I should have gone with that hit. These have frostbite in them when you hit those urns open, and I believe it does affect them. Oh, that was probably risky to do that, actually. I have no health. Piece of cake. Uh, we're gonna analyze these paintings then here in a second. But first, I wanted to get rid of that guy who shoots. And there's also a few items up here. Leo Ring. Smoe's Great Hammer. And another Divine Blessing. Leo Ring. One thing I didn't even think about is that Leo, the lion, there's a lion on that. That represents Ornstein, who has a lion face. And we read about the Ferosas had the, the lion knights in Ferosa. So I'm sure they're knights based off of Ornstein's thing, much long after Lordran fell or whatever, or changed, or, and Rolando fell. Um, so I didn't put that together until after my Dark Souls 2 playthrough, but I thought I'd mention it here now that we're seeing like the lion presence with Ornstein again. Ring associated with Ornstein. Uh, Ornstein was the first knight of the son's eldest born. 
um, and his cross spear is said to appear scales made of stone. So yeah, here's kind of the first indication that we've seen that Ornstein and the and the firstborn are kind of they were together before um, before he became a knight of Gwyn. And that's why they have probably have the, the same uh, um, weapon. Um, Smoe's hammer. Twisted great hammer associated with Smoe, the last knight, knight to remain at his post guarding the ruined cathedral. Restore HP while attacking and carry over from Smoe's pass as an executioner, which is what the, the butcher knife does. Um, which is an executioner's tool as well. But it's interesting, it says Smo was the last knight to remain at his post, meaning that he became a knight somehow, because he wasn't granted knightdom, or whatever you call it. He wasn't a knight in the first Dark Souls because of him, he ate his victims. He ground their bones into uh, whatever. Oh, we should read this too. Traditional America, miracle of Katerina. The people of lands known for festivity and drink and are typically outspoken. One can be sure that they will not bottle their emotions, instead venting anger and the like with confidence. Um, but, um, yeah, so he somehow became a knight since we left. Um, obviously that wasn't Gwyn's doing or anything, but yeah, so first we see a picture of Guinevere here that the, the Silver Knight was staring at. Then we see a picture of what looks like uh, Anne Orlando. Then a picture of the Throne of Want. And a picture of Nishandra, which doesn't give us dark. Then we have a picture of the Duke's archives and a picture of a frozen city, Irithyll, Ilium Lois. And Orlando. Are they all the same? <laughs> Who's to say? Okay, this is a bit of a grind to get through here, but we're going to do it, slowly but surely. We have some interesting statues here. Oh, nice. Okay, it looks like we have some soul spears or some farin darts. Um, statue just looks like some sort of archdeacon or some sort of bishop. I get this. Okay. Whew. Uh, we're not fully done yet, but the dog part is done. Come on. Oh, the dog part's not done. I'll take it back. Alright. This could be evoking the statue at Firelink Shrine where she's holding a child, but there is no child in this one. It has been removed. Um, yeah, we're going to unlock this. At least one shortcut if I don't get the second one. 
Um, we look down on this from up over there, by the way. Um, is there nothing on the railing? Okay, just a little bit more to go before we can uh, call this area kind of explored and finished. We're coming up on time here too, so this might go over a little bit. Certainly a lot of slaves around here. Blue bug blue bug pellets. A lot of stuff that just shatters when you walk into it. Um and from over here you can actually see um a illusory wall because there's an item right there. These guys make like horse noises. Like galloping noise. Oh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have to choose... Ooh, Pontiff Knight Crown. We'll have to choose who we... Uh... Oops. summon for this fight. But we won't do the fight for a while. Ooh, Pontiff Knight Gauntlets. Crown of the Pontiff's Knights, now harrowed spirits of Irithil. The golden crown s signifies those who report directly to Sullivan. The knights were his watchful eyes, and when needed, his punitive blades. This blue-haired, blue-gray gauntlet uh, shrouded in a thinly cold air is light and brittle. Um, I don't believe there's anything back here, but it always makes me check. All right, so first things first. I tried to hit these guys. Okay, got an ember. Here's the main shortcut we want to... to open up. I think this is just trouble, but... Oh, wow. Oh, they've gone away, okay. They're gonna come back though. Okay, so here's the illusory wall. Let's pick this up real quick. Magic clutch ring. There's an item up here. Lightning gem. We're gonna read all this in a second. Uh, let's see if we can get out here and back before they come down come back up and then we can go back and tell um, greater at about this place ring of the sun's firstborn all right so yeah we're going to let's see is there anything here does this say useless no Okay, we might have to evade some of these guys here. We can see that those children's statues are here. What looks like, a, again, similar to that cardinal or bishop or something. 
And this does look like an altar, somewhat, or something. And obviously there's the big cathedral that we saw when we entered. Um, and then here is the actual shortcut, as we will use it. Which makes doing this boss very easy. But we won't need it because I'm going to summon people and it'll be over in five seconds. Alright, so let us jump to Firelink Shrine. And we're just at an hour. I just want to get this done before we call it a an episode. Oh, and there's Cirrus. Discovering Irithyll in the Boreal Valley, all in a day's work. If the tales are true, it is home to old moon-worshipping nobles, and should be packed with treasure. What do you think? Shall I go and see what I can find? Yes. Mm, a fine choice. I am Grey Rat the Thief. What I bring back will be worthy of that name. <laughs> Goodbye. Do. All right. What do you got to say, Cirrus? Hmm. I have not thanked you for your generous rescue. That dark spirit was one of Rosaria's fingers. Aha. A vile bastard offspring who lurk in the darkness. So that's a third finger. My sworn enemy. Fearsome invaders, to say the least. I would not have made it alone. You have my deepest gratitude. Bless Melbreaker and a silver cat ring. If you require help on your travels, I offer you my sign, blessing of the moon upon your journey. If you require. Okay, so the blessed Mailbreaker is just a Mailbreaker, but blessed, and we've already read that. So, um, she also gives the silver cat ring, which prevents damage from falling, which we'll be probably using at some point. Silver ring depicting the, a leaping feline prevents damage from falling. In the age of gods, or possibly just following it, an old cat was said to speak a human tongue with the voice of an old woman and the form of a fanciful immortal. So that's either... Shalquar or Alvina, I guess, maybe you could argue. Ah, oh, how may gracious passing fine ash thou'st given. Let this ash bestow nourishment. I only hope these new wares can <laughs> Okay, so I had really absolutely no lore associated with it. Um stock dung pie, similar to dung pie, but you just drop it behind you. Don't need to read it, I don't think. Um, no new weapons here. Um, and nothing. I mean, it just had extra items, but we've read them all. Just making sure. Okay. Yeah. Ashen one. And we didn't beat any boss, we didn't do anything. So we'll just quick level up. Um, all right. Well, join me for the next episode where we finish up the uh, Boreal Valley. How many of these do we have? Okay. Um, and uh, we'll fight Pontus Sullivan right away next episode. So don't miss it. Bye.